less egalitarian on 827, but I'll try not to as well. I, I will say that I think, you know, from, from those of us on the real estate side, it's clear that we're putting so many billions of dollars of investments in public transit into Los Angeles. We have the Olympics coming. There's lots of new development. And we've got to figure out how to get some density, some smart density, particularly along transit lines. It's just what we need to do. And NIMBYism and a regulatory environment and a bunch of other things that we'll probably talk about in the uh, workshop after this um, uh, serve as real impediments. But um, now I'd like to, to introduce our next uh, very distinguished speaker, uh, Dr. Michael Rodriguez. Um, Dr. Michael Rodriguez is an MD, um, MPH, uh, is a professor and vice chair in the Department of Family Medicine at the David Geffen School of Medicine, UCLA, uh, also professor in the Department of Community Health Sciences at the UCLA Jonathan and Karen Fielding uh, School of Public Health, and founding director of the UCLA Blum Center uh, on Poverty uh, and Health in Latin America. So with that, I'll turn it over to the good doctor. Thanks, Tim. Wow. Well, good afternoon. Oh, Clay, uh, I <laughs> Paul just took it all out of you, huh? <laughs> it's hard to follow you, Paul. I've always heard about you, and uh, now I've had the pleasure to hear you in real life. Uh, quite a visionary and uh, and a hard act to follow. Uh, so, uh, and thank you, uh, Tim, for the uh, kind introduction. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, partly in tribute to my ex-neighbor, Dick Jackson. Uh, and so uh, we had lots of good times. And uh, hopefully, we'll have a lot more good times, too. Maybe we'll have more good times. <laughs> uh, I, wa I want to talk about a project uh, recently that we did. Uh, and this project, I need to, first of all, acknowledge a few people. Uh, Dr. Brian Cole, who's uh, here in the second row, uh, was one of my uh, collaborators uh, on that project. On this project, uh, Dr. Magali Del Mas from the uh, Anderson School of uh, Business or Management is another uh, co-investigator. Uh, co uh, we worked with the project director, Michelle Maurer. And so uh, we were the core team that uh, worked with CBRE. Uh, I, uh, I also actually saw a few other friends in the audience, and I, I do want to I acknowledge a friend who used to work with me, or at least in the same floor, uh, and for family medicine, Rosemary Venegas. And so uh, she's now sort of gone over, and instead of asking for money, she's just giving money. <laughs> so, <laughs> the Cal she's a senior program officer with the, C with the California Community Foundation, and she does a bang up job. So, um, so anyway, I just wanted to acknowledge you, uh, Rose. And, um, and Robert Garcia, who you'll hear from soon. Also another colleague, uh, civil rights attorney. And, uh, and uh, you know, you, you got to wait out, wait to hear him because uh, he'll talk like nobody else has talked so far. So uh, on that note, um, this project is, um, is, is a collaboration between UCLA and CBRE. Um, but, but before this project happened, uh, I just need to talk about how things start, okay? So you never know how a project is going to get started. And so, uh, so this guy, not me, but uh, kind of, we had the same hairdo. But, <laughs> but other than that, <laughs> kind of the same complexion, but different guy. Not my brother either. Uh, <laughs> but he's there at a table. Uh, and you can imagine, I can imagine him being me because having lunch. And it was a lunch where I was being introduced to some people, people from a company called CBRE. Uh, now, uh, what's, and, and, and little would I know that I would be doing this project that I'm about to talk about right now. Uh, so CBRE, uh, the executives from CBRE. And uh, it's the largest commercial real estate company in the world. It operates in four, 450 offices worldwide, has clients in more than 100 countries. Services provided by the company include facilities management, uh, property management, leasing, capital markets, appraisal, brokerage uh, services to owners of commercial real estate. Uh, their divisions 
uh, also manage, work with uh, investment funds. This company receives businesses from 90 of the 100 companies uh, on the Fortune 100. So, big. Uh, and also for me, it, was go it, was, it signified purely working in academia with researchers or with community to working with the private sector, which, which, is, which was first time in my career. Uh, I had previously had identified them as the dark side. Uh, and so <laughs> but, uh, but in fact, uh, those senior folks said, you know, sounds like you have some good ideas about this thing that you call built environment that we have something to do with in commercial real estate and health. So since you sound like a do-gooder, why don't you talk to our people who are doing corporate social responsibility? So I said, okay, great. And my thought was, my, uh, corporate social responsibility many times is uh, one-offs, uh, sort of different types of uh, people's favorite sort of charity to give to, uh, or volunteer activities for workers. Rarely did I ever hear about corporations who were substantially involved with corporate social responsibility, developing relationships, long-term relationships with communities. And my vision is that if we're gonna make changes, we need to be partnering, and we need to have long-term relationships with, with communities that we are, 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 are saying that we'd like to have an impact on helping to improve the health of those communities. Well, I talked to him about this, the, person who's in charge, his name is Dave Pogue, and he said, wow, I think we need to take this back upstairs. And so, um, so what sounded like it was gonna be a focused project in corporate social responsibility ended up being a project that was gonna focus on the whole company, that whole company I described earlier. And, uh, and it was related to this issue of built environment, and particularly, uh, the piece that commercial real estate is a part of, having a significant impact on the environment. And this impact is um, related to resource use. It's related to transit and land use. And it's also related to waste and carbon emissions, as well as many other factors that directly impact health. Uh, and so, so, uh, so, in doing this project, I looked for somebody who, who would be a natural ally who had some background, and that's Brian, uh, Brian Cole, Dr. Cole. And, and so, uh, so we started working, and Brian goes, you know, I, I've done something that kind of helps to look at this relationship, so why don't we, you know, pull it out and see what we can do with it, this model. And so Brian had this model, and this is an adaptation of the original model, uh, but you know, it's still cold, 2016. Uh, and, um, and this talks a little bit about a sociological framework that looks at the building, a building, and thinks about the way in which that building has an impact on the community, on, on folks inside it, as well as the people outside the footprint of that building. And so you can see that the building in the middle and then the building, which is, has a, a small community, a neighborhood that the building is part of, the city and the region. And in many different ways, as you can see, and I won't go into details based on the time that I have, but you can see that you know, if you look at, for example, physical elements of the, of the built environment, the buildings in particular, the space, the air exposures, light exposures, heat, noise, food, physical infrastructure, those are all key elements. Uh, the aesthetics, uh, and so you can look at how, how this construction influences physical envir elements of the built environment, social environment, cultural resources and meaningfulness, community institutions, economic opportunities, as well as the natural environment. All those factors and all those other in small letters, smaller letters, it's just examples of that, helping to sort of put together the connection between this aspect of the built environment <coughs> and health. And helping it, helping those folks who are working 
for this corporation to, to get it and say, wow, you know, this, this, uh, this is related to what we do. And, and, and so the person who I was, we were speaking with, he had gone through in the previous 10 years and worked on the whole phenomenon of the green movement, right? So sustainability, thinking about how corporate, this, this whole industry, corporate real estate, had worked to modify, look at the ways in which they design what they do so that it would be much more uh, sort of sensitive to issues related to the planet. And so I said, well, now that you've made some headway with the planet, how about we start working with the people on that planet, okay? Uh, which, of course, is related, but let's work a little bit more directly. And, and so it was a yes. What happened, much of what he, the person, Dave, was talking about, a lot of what happened in their movement in, in sustainability in the green phenomenon was, was sort of lots of just sort of finding out along the way and eventually becoming a leader in the, in the field. What he wanted to do is take some of what they had learned from that and see how they could intentionally now start to do business differently in this arena. And so, uh, so it took trying to think about how to convince a big corporation. And so you think about uh, what's their, what, are, what is their encouragement and, and, and their commitment, and it's to encourage the development, implementation of an integrated program to create measurable benefits for the company, clients, and communities served. That's socially responsible, market-driven business solutions. So this is putting sort of some positive health-related connections to, um, to potentially beneficial outcomes that could be related to health and well-being of communities. So now, that's an important issue, is how we define communities. Or perhaps in this case, how CBRE defines communities. And so, uh, so uh, again, what is a community, right? So we could say it's a gathering, a place of gathering, as well as a place of shared interests and shared values. So for them, they start off with a single office space. Of course, these days we have fewer and fewer office spaces, but, uh, but you get the point. That space where a person works, that's an area. Well, that, that can then go and, and become a building, right? So an office, which is part of a building, which then becomes part of a district in a town, usually, uh, which is then part of a living community, okay? And so these are the different waves, you know, go harken back to Charles's sort of ec uh, ecological sort of framework, and this is really borrowing from that, how we talked about connecting that building or structure with the community and the different ways in which it's connected as also depicted in the, uh, in the, in the framework that uh, Dr. Cole uh, leaded. And so we look at shared advantage as how, how it can improve occupant outcomes through innovative design, sustained management practices, and healthy programming. Uh, it's essentially, what we were trying to say is that there's lots of different ways in which they could carry out a project. How about thinking about some of the steps involved so that they could actually have a positive impact on health of individuals, individuals in a building, and the community outside the building? And so, uh, so then we look at how it, uh, how the, it increases buildings' operational efficiencies, enhancing the property's value, and benefiting the local economy as well as having a positive, far-reaching influence on surrounding neighborhoods and the broader community. So this, this became something that started to excite people, not just the, the person who was in charge of corporate social responsibility, but the vice president of the company, eventually the president of the company, eventually the board members of the company, 
and wanting to create this shared advantage across all the different uh, operational lines of business that they do. Thinking that you could have some intentionality that has an impact on health and wellness in all the different business lines and, and all the work that they do and incentives, key, key performance indicators for the executives and other incentives to help them to do the right thing that results in a win-win. Win for the, for the company and a win for the community. So uh, a, a small example of this uh, can be seen by the work in Compton. Okay, so Compton has a, has a storied history. I, I sort of associate it with uh, NWA. Anybody know what uh, NWA is? Uh, the, the gang, the, they used to call you know, the rap, you know? Uh, they had an attitude, okay? Yeah. I, I, I thought it was a healthy attitude. Uh, I like the music, but uh, I won't play any for you because, uh, but, but you know what I'm talking about. And so, uh, so now they had this, this plot of land about a million square feet in Compton. Now Compton is a town south of here where perhaps within, within a, a 50 mile radius, you have about 15 million people living. So it's a big chunk of land with lots of people who live around it. And, and so, uh, so there was a, a so the, the Trammell Crow Company, which is a, a, a one of the business lines of CBRE, they got the project, and, and they're interested in looking and having this expanded expression of a sustainable development project. What does that mean to be a sustainable development project? Beyond just LEED certification, as we talked about something that's related to sustainability, but and one-off environmental actions, the company made it an organizational commitment to influencing the brickyard, is what they called it, wellness, the social fabric of the community, and transportation. And so, uh, as a, uh, so to go beyond what a typical project might do, uh, as well as governance. And uh, they introduced several considerations in this partnership with the community of Compton to amplify its impact by investing 8.9 million in neighborhood improvements, including 2.2 million to local infrastructure projects such as road and bus stop improvements. They also uh, provided clean vehicle stalls and, uh, and charging stations for cars. Invested $1 million in perimeter landscaping, including one mile of tree-lined walking paths. Uh, they also committed annual financial support for youth programs and financially supporting industrial jobs training in local schools and community college, college districts. Uh, so you can see that this combination not only has the opportunity for sort of building some structures there that hired people, oh, and who people? Well, at least 35% local hiring. So creating also a revenue for those people who were there. Uh, and in that way, creating a win-win situation. A project that isn't just transactional, but it's generational. That it, and so too is the business. Uh, and they say that every business has circles of influence that extend beyond their physical presence by aligning their interests with community leaders, stakeholders, investors, and, uh, and that this creates a shared advantage. So, this is just the very, very beginning of a new wave of work. And some of the potential areas that you can imagine uh, are, are looking at measuring health and economic effects of this approach. Designing, how, what are design elements that help to maximize promoting community health? What, how do you measure? What are the different measures that you use to contribute to uh, you know, to, the, to, to measure the, the contributions of global corporations to health and well-being. Uh, assessment of measurement tools used for community well-being. Development efforts in the area of tools, approaches, and components of projects to promote shared advantage, as well as development of business cases for shared advantage, not only for CBRE, but for the whole field. And so, uh, so for me, 
Uh, I also, it's been a great pleasure to share this little story, and I uh, look forward to uh, chatting with you afterwards. Thank you.